Greetings, everyone. My channel will be taking a little different turn. There is a well-known phenomena challenge, if you will, for all people who have actually made the peak of Mount Everest. Getting to the top is only half the challenge. If you wanna live, you also have to climb back down. Here's the concept. Climbing Mount Everest, meaning finding out you're from a narcissistically abusive, dysfunctional family, and that's why you picked really, really inappropriate partners, but they were appropriate for you to learn what you needed to learn. They were appropriate for me to learn what I needed to learn. And now I'm better off because of it. But it's been hard. So I'm climbing back down from the peak of my personal Mount Everest, which is recognizing that I'm a child of a narcissistic family structure with a narcissistic mother and an enabling father who doesn't seem to have his own will to assert. And my parents are still alive, but they're there, there's, there's a story here. There they are. Validation is an inside job and is very challenging in a world like we have today without having been in a narcissistic family structure. However, the more I look into this world of ours, the more I am actually going to theorize that narcissists and narcissistic abuse is far more prevalent than previously realized. So pull up a cup of cuppa. We're going to have a talk and it's about how to get down from Mount Everest alive. So you climbed the mountain. You realized the bull crap that you've been dealing with. What next? What next is you have to reparent yourself. I have talked about Eric Erickson's eight stages of childhood development. You have to go through a reparenting structure that floats your boat. I give myself permission to be a work in progress. Drink whatever drink you're having. Cheers to that, everybody. Cheers to that. Before I knew what morals and values were, my pathologically narcissistic mother, who just so happened to have gotten her master's degree in guidance and counseling, my theory was so she'd know exactly what to say to F us up at whatever stage of development we were in. You said to me when I was a high school student, when no other siblings were around, and she said it admonishingly. She said it with this sort of attitude. Kathleen? What are your morals and values? You have to have morals and values. You cannot live your life without morals and values. Well, she didn't tell me what morals and values were. She didn't demonstrate what a parent would, what a moral or a value was, nor did she tell me what hers were. Instead, she asked me, demanded of me, that I tell her what my morals and values were. And in my recollection, I did what I wisely uh, did as default to any of her questions, which I knew would then turn into arguments. Not only would they turn into arguments, they would turn into verbal uh, abuse. She would then pick apart what my morals were she would then pick apart what my values were. So I chose to keep it buttoned up and not say anything. Didn't demonstrate what they were. She didn't let me know what hers were. Yeah. So I now am at a place of what are my values? 
This is put the morals aside. Morals. It's like, almost sounds like something you would have with porridge. <laughs> Curds and whey, morals and values. Values. What are values? Well, I'm learning that I did not have value in myself. I wasn't valued for me. I wasn't valued for what I actually was. I was valued only in what I could do for this person. Her. That person right there. But this, that, that creature who probably came from, in my sci-fi theory, the planet that blew itself up. Because can you imagine a planet of narcissists? Because they would rather destroy anything and everything than for somebody else to have it. They would rather see you have a terrible life so that they can feel better about themselves and then for you to have a good life so that they could be happy for you. She's old now and she's still doing damage. And she beat up my dad with a remote control and the batteries went everywhere. And then she went over to the television set and was trying to turn the TV on with the batteries on the floor. <laughs> And then she got even madder and went and got a yardstick. And then my brother had to take it out of her hands. And he said to her, you've gotten meaner, Jane. <laughs>
they have the lack of oxygen, if they have hypothermia, they start hallucinating. Narcissistic abuse escapees, people who have finally realized what they have been in their entire lives as recovering adult children of narcissistic abuse, who then went on to be with abusive partners, who then are abused by others who blame them for picking those partners, who then throw insults at them, telling them they are the ones that must be the problem. The abuse doesn't stop, but because I value myself, I weed my garden just as much as I pick up the trash. And so when some trashy comment is somewhere in the comment section on my channel, on my YouTube channel, I will simply remove it. Rather than putting on my kid gloves and saying, what do you mean by that asshole? It's just like, huh, look at that person disagreeing with me with an insult. Oh, such a classic narcissistic move or toxic move. If they call you a name, if they judge you, if you disagree with them and say, let's agree to disagree, but then they then tell you that you don't have the ability to see things the way they do, weed them. Get rid of them. They're not important. It's so much fun to be able to go, ah, I see where my values are. My values are in being around top-notch people who, whether they agree with you or disagree with you, are able to maintain a professional attitude of and positive communication. A positive communication was not something I learned from my narcissistic mother, nor from my father, who didn't communicate very effectively with her. It was never demonstrated how a healthy relationship actually is. I never really saw any love. I saw codependency. And I once thought, hmm, am I codependent? Well, no, I wasn't codependent. I was trauma bonded. Here's the concept. Climbing Mount Everest, meaning finding out you're from a narcissistically abusive, dysfunctional family. And that's why you pick really, really inappropriate partners, but they were appropriate for you to learn what you needed to learn. They were appropriate for me to learn what I needed to learn. And now I'm better off because of it, but it's been hard. You can't count on a Sherpa if you've got hypothermia and you can't move your body anymore and you're in the dead zone. So I'm currently climbing down, going through the dead zone of my personal Mount Everest. So where are you in your journey? Where are you in your life? You know, recovery takes a long time. It's not an overnight thing. And that's something I'm giving myself um, carte blanche, if you will, to take the amount of time I need to do the healing I need to do. But here's the deal. Self-acceptance, radical self-acceptance, self-forgiveness to yourself, and you do not have to forgive your nerd parents. You don't. Know what they did. No, you're never going to be validated. They're never going to say to you, oh my God, did we ever mess up? Boy, do we mismanage you. They're never going to say that. <laughs> ah, that's right. The men commenters, the number one thing they all want to say to me, oh, you're single and depressed. It's on the top, one of the top, most viewed videos in my channel. If you look at my channel 
and you will see it in the top six. It could be number four now. Uh, and it is women, single women over 50. Trust me, you'll be better off single. Something like that. Um, I love men. I do. But do I want one in my life permanently at this point in time? No, because I'm in the dead zone. Save yourself first. But here's the dealio of the a-holes in the comment section of that video. They're like single and depressed. It's like they want you to have bad happen to you. That's evil. That's evil. You can disagree with a person, but why this ill will? Why? Why? Because they're not right in the head. That's a toxic man. Um, I don't wish anything terrible onto these people. And this one toxic man, I was like, ah, oh, project much? You may be single and depressed. He goes, no, I'm happily married with five sons. And I'm thinking to myself, happily married with five sons? I wonder what his wife says. Hmm, happily married with five sons. Well, what are you doing on a woman's channel who's actually saying information for people who have escaped narcissistic abuse? Women that are happier because we got away from narcissistically abusive relationships and there is a huge chunk of missing healthy people in our society and it's better to live a humble existence alone than with more abuse from somebody who hasn't done their Mount Everest, who hasn't climbed down through the dead zone, who hasn't done the challenges of getting to their own base camp. And then you can celebrate. Hmm? Yeah? I make a lot of sense, don't I? Yeah, I know I do. <laughs> I am at this wonderful peak of personal understanding of putting value back into me. I have parents who are aging, but my, go my uh, the golden child sister, who I love, who should not misunderstand my labeling of her. It's the fact she's the golden child. She didn't have it as hard as us, but she had it difficult and challenging in another way. Oh, one of my insulters on my YouTube channel made fun of my shoebox kitchen and told me I was drinking boxed wine. Enjoy your boxed wine. These toxic people cannot, cannot add their two cents worth in the comment section without insulting you. But what does that do for me? It gives me the opportunity to throw out the trash. Yes. So cheers to that, everybody. Go through the trash in your life and in your mind. Get rid of it. And what are my values? I value a beautiful existence with value in it that people who know me and love me listen to what I have to say, offer their information so that they then allow me to listen and empathize with them to understand what they are going through, to be able to be privy to their joys as well as their trials. So that's what life's all about, Charlie Brown. To be a good human, to be a kind person without being a doormat. Yeah. Okay, Mwah. have a great day. Be able to create the life you want, knowing the hazards, especially the ones that have been ingrained in here. Negative self-talk. You have to learn to shut it up. Shut up. Go count the hairs on the cat. Go count the fibers in the rug. Poof. 
they go away, just like those negative comments on YouTube. Well, <laughs> I recently thought about it and I thought to myself, there are people who have been through difficulties and they end up healing. And then there are people who have been through difficulties and they end up breaking forever. And I'm discovering that no matter what, and no matter how much I may love a person who has gone through difficulties, it's possible that that person may never, ever, ever heal. But you can't actually do anything about a nurse, pathological narcissist other than basically allow them <laughs> to self-destruct. <laughs> which they will inevitably do. <laughs>